four things about life in the spirit. Number one is you will have to know the spirit. So I wrote this book on knowing the spirit, um, getting to know the Holy Ghost, the fact that he is the quickening spirit. And Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing. And the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life, knowing the spirit. Then I wrote this one, following the spirit. And the third in the series was living by the spirit. And the fourth in the series is ministering by the spirit. So you know the spirit, you follow the spirit, you live by the spirit to the point that even your physical life, you depend on the spirit to sustain it, to promote it, to project it, and to bless your life. And the final one is living by the spirit. So you know the spirit, you follow the spirit, you live by the spirit, and you minister by the spirit because fleshly ministration is becoming a lot. Fleshly and intellectual ministry is not the ministry that God gave to us. He gave us a spiritual ministry. And even when it comes to preaching the word of God, we must preach the word of God by the spirit and not by the flesh. That gives us five of the books done. Now I have eight booklets which I also did this year. This one is called 40 Homebreakers. 40 Homebreakers. And then this one is The Disciple Whom Jesus Loved. And then I have here Decency and Order. And then I have here Changing Your World with Your Tongue. Then I have here Ten Keys to Fruitfulness. Then I have here The Person and the Purpose. Then I have 30 Facts About Your Mission. And then 101 Traits of Initiators. Um, that gives us 13. And as I speak to you, I have finished writing another four manuscripts. Those four manuscripts are symbols and tokens. Then I wrote on anointing with oil. Then I wrote on the laying on of hands. And then I wrote on falling under the power. On garments, prayer cloth, um, handkerchiefs and aprons, points of contact. Um, why does somebody touch the clothing of a minister and get healed? Why do they send a prayer cloth to somebody and tell the person, lay hands on it and you'll be healed and delivered? Some skeptics dismiss these things completely and they say they don't work. But I'm going to tell you from the scriptural point of view that such a practice is scriptural. And in our day, we are deriving benefits from the impartation of the spirit through that. When I finish with that, I will do another one on operating by breath. Why do preachers breathe on people? Why do they tell somebody in a meeting, taking a deep breath? Why does a preacher breathe into a microphone? Some say, wow, this, this, this is odd. They shouldn't be breathing on people. But I'll show you from the scriptures how Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. How the prophets of old lay on dead people and stretch themselves. And these dead people sneezed and came back to life. I will show you the operation by breath, how Jesus would take a sick person in front of him and sigh. And a sigh is a deep breath that is released with an audible noise. And um, Jesus did that and people got healed. He did that because of the compassion that was in him and the heaviness that was in his heart for the sick person. If I write them like this, I want every partner of EAM to read them because I'm in partnership with you. I do the writing, you are the partner of EAM, you read it. I want every member of the body of Christ to read them. I do the writing, other preachers do the writing, other authors do the writing, and somebody reads it. That is what gives us a good partnership in writing and reading. Jesus is the word, and yet he read the word. So when he said it is written, he didn't say I say, he said it is written. That means although he inspired the writing of the word and he is the word, he also read the word. He read the word. That is why he said it is written. So the Logos himself read the word. You cannot say you won't read the word. Being a believer is not enough. You will have to know the word. You have to know what the word is saying. And some people explain the word as God gives them inspiration and your life gets blessed. So may God bless you and empower you to um, just do the reading. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The of the Lord is here. I feel it can do is
is that envy can make people oppose you. And how many of you sometimes feel some opposition? You, you sense opposition. You can feel that somebody is trying to push you back or somebody is trying to hold you down. Now, whenever people start opposing you, many times they will not even tell you the real reason why they are opposing you. They will find all kinds of reasons. They will accuse you of all kinds of wrongdoing just to justify why they are opposing you. But the underlying cause of all the opposition is envy. And um, some of the opposition that you face in life, you, you, you will not always understand why it is coming. If you think in life, you are so righteous, you are so honest, and you are so innocent that you will not face any opposition, you will be deceiving yourself. And the people that oppose you, some of them will oppose you out of ignorance. Others will oppose you out of um, religious prejudice. Some will oppose you because of their traditional values. And then others will oppose you because of envy. And um, one clear instance of opposition that we find in the Bible is in the book of Genesis. Where the Bible said that the man Joseph had two children. Manasseh and Ephraim. And then one day, he heard that his father was sick. And the sick father's name is Jacob. And um, Joseph understood and knew that his father had this unusual gift where he could lay hands on people. And by the laying on of hands, spiritual gift and blessing will be transferred. So the man, Joseph, took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, carried them into the presence of his father. And um, when he approached his father, Manasseh was the firstborn, so he put him on his left. And then he put Ephraim on the right, so that Ephraim will approach um, Jacob's left hand, and Manasseh will approach Jacob's um, right hand. When they got to the father, this man was so spiritually smart, that he crossed his hands. He crossed his hands and put the right hand on Ephraim, who was the younger brother, and put the left hand on, on Manasseh's head. Then the Bible said that Joseph did not understand it and he attempted to change the order. And the Bible said, I will read that part of the story. The Bible said, and when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. Now, so when Joseph saw that his father had put his right hand on Ephraim's head, the Bible said it displeased him. This is the man's own father. His grandfather has put his right hand on his head. And it displeases his father. So it can happen that among your father's children, there is, he doesn't mind you being blessed, but maybe he prefers somebody being more blessed than you. And this is in the same house, same family. Same house, same family. So I just assume here that if somebody's father can be displeased, that the person is blessed, then as for your enemies, I don't know. As for your uncles, I don't know. As for your aunties, I don't know. As for your stepfathers and stepmoms, I don't know. Out, as for your next door neighbor, I don't know. There is a house I know in a village. And when the sons come to visit, the daddy will tell the son, don't visit this particular house. Don't go to this house because they don't like us. So you and I know that some of you visit your villages and when you go to visit your father or your mother, you, can, you cannot even go into your uncle's houses. And when they give you water, you don't only sanctify it, you go into spiritual warfare before you drink the water. In fact, in Africa, you, you know the Bible said that when they put any food in front of you, just eat it, asking no questions. 
but the, the food is sanctified by prayer and by the word of God. In fact, in most of our African culture, the food is sanctified by spiritual warfare and battle. Not just by the word and prayer. I mean, that is why they will give somebody food and then he says, in the name of Jesus, I soak this food in the blood of Jesus. I, I soak it in the blood of Jesus. I mix it with the flesh of Jesus. I, and you may think they are over praying, but they know what they are fighting. They know what they are fighting because I mean, your life is not safe. And um, so they, they put their hand on um, the right hand on Ephraim's head, and the Bible said it displeased Joseph. And then watch this. This Joseph, apart from being Manasseh's father, was a very spiritual man. This was a dreamer. Very spiritual man who turned the economy of Egypt around. And yet, he couldn't understand why this one would be blessed. I'm telling you the truth. There are many people who don't understand why you are where you are. They are very disturbed. They are very troubled. They think God has made a mistake. So it displeased him. And he held his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head onto Manasseh's head. So somebody is making an attempt to remove the blessing from your head and put it on another person's head. And so something you, some favor God is giving to you, somebody's not happy, the hand that is on your head to remove it and put it on another person's head. And Joseph said unto his father, not so. Everybody shout, not so. So he said, not so, my father. And there are many people who are shouting, not so. When they see you are blessed, some go to a fetish priest and say, not so. Some go to a diviner and say, not so. Some go to your boss and say, not so. And the serious one too is that there are believers who go into prayer meetings and they shout unto God, not so. It would amaze you the number of Christians who pray to God that you are not the right person to be blessed. They believe it has to be somebody else. You are not holy enough. You are not righteous enough. They, they think you are not prayerful enough. They, they think you are not pure enough. They, they think you don't know the Bible enough. They think you are not anointed enough. They think the favor you have received from God is unmerited. They think you don't deserve where you are. And they are praying all night, speaking in tongues and believing God for you to come down. And they are busy screaming, not so, not so. And sometimes they go to God and they tell God that they are not the tail but they are the head. You are supposed to be the tail. And they will tell God they are not the last, but they are the first. And they will look at you and say they are the rejected stone, but they will become the head of the corner. That is why anytime you see yourself being blessed, you will have to know that there is a concerted effort somewhere for the blessing to be removed from your head. And that is why you become careful. You become smart. You become more diligent with your blessing. Because there is somebody somewhere who is screaming, not so. So he said, not so, my father. For this is the firstborn. Put your right hand upon him. Now, Joseph is not a bad man, but he's dealing with tradition. Tradition. And the tradition says, the, right, the, the senior person must have the right hand upon them. So he said, not so, my father, because this is the, the, the firstborn. Put your right hand upon him. But I love this part. The Bible said in the verse number 19, and his father refused. So I can hear somebody saying, God, not so, but I can also hear God refusing. And God is also saying, no, I know what I'm doing. He said, I know it, I know it. He also shall be a people, and he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. So the thing that is causing the problem here is not so much of envy as tradition. It is tradition. And why it is difficult to understand this is that by now, Joseph should have known that God is not a respecter of persons. And that is because Joseph himself was a beneficiary of God's mercy. You and I remember that Joseph and Judah, they were younger than their other brothers like um like Reuben and yet 
Joseph and Judah had the preeminence instead of Reuben. So you, Joseph, you yourself, you were not the firstborn, and yet your father made you the coat of many colors. And when it is now somebody's turn to receive the right hand, you think that person doesn't deserve it. There are many of you under the sound of my voice. You are a product of the mercy of God. But any time you see somebody receiving mercy, you get angry. Oh, the person doesn't deserve the blessing. But you yourself, do you deserve it? Well, you are yourself. You don't deserve it. Once upon a time, God showed you mercy. And when it is somebody's time to receive mercy, you don't understand it. Joseph should have known by now that Abel was the younger brother, but he received preference to Cain. Joseph should have known by now that Shem received preeminence over Jephthah. He should have known by now that Isaac blessed Jacob with the tenfold blessing and gave um, Esau, who was the firstborn, the fivefold blessing. David was anointed out of all the sons of Jesse, but he was not the firstborn. And I, I speak to somebody today that I'm believing God to come upon you in such a way that others will begin to rise up in envy because you don't deserve where you are. May God begin to bless you with blessings you don't deserve. Position you in places you don't deserve. Make you what you have not worked for. That is what favor is all about. That the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong. And bread is not to the wise. And riches are not to men of understanding. And favor is not for men of skill. People, the truth is that you will meet people and they'll tell you, well, that, that person, he doesn't deserve what he has. Even in church, I have seen it happen in church. You can see a pastor. The person is not a very powerful preacher. The person is not a very anointed preacher. The person is not very charismatic. And yet, he stands in front of the people every Sunday morning. And he says, well, God is good. And then the people say all the time. And he says, God is good. And the people say all the time. And he talks about David and Goliath. And how David took a stone and killed Goliath. Simple story. And after that, shall we share the grace? And the church is growing. Another pastor will come every Sunday. He's anointed. He will preach and shout and jump on chairs and lay hands on people. Everybody will fall down and get up. He will pray. Cripples will be healed. Blind will be healed. And yet, his church is not growing. And this pastor will look at this one and say, this man hasn't got an anointing, but his church is growing. Why am I anointed? My church is not growing. God has made it in such a way that no flesh shall glory in his presence. He has made it in such a way that when you are blessed, you cannot even understand why you are blessed. That is why many people who are truly blessed, when they look in their own lives, they can see a lot of inconsistencies. They can see a lot of inadequacies. They can see a lot of conflicts. And whenever you see a blessed man who is truly blessed, when you look at them, you will see so many things you don't understand. Sometimes even in terms of holiness You can look at yourself And you are holier than the person And yet the person looks more blessed Sometimes you can look at yourself You are more intelligent than this person And yet the person has employed you And is paying you a salary And you will be wondering why Sometimes you can be more beautiful than somebody And you are not married And the person is not beautiful And yet she is married You can look at yourself You are more handsome You don't have a, a wife Somebody else is there Doesn't look good And the person has got a, a, a wife And then you are saying Well Lord I, I don't understand But I think I qualify more than this person God has made it in such a way That he chooses the foolish things of the world To confound the wise And the weak things of the world To confound the things that are mighty The best things of the world The things that are not And the things that are despised God has chosen to bring to naught The things that are And when you think you are qualified God thinks you are not qualified Because when God blesses you When you think you are qualified You are likely to take the glory unto yourself So even the people that are blessed, they struggle. Because there are times they think the thing is a dream. They look at themselves. Their intelligence is not there. They look at themselves. They, they themselves, they doubt themselves a little bit. 
and you can stand on the side and you are looking at it and you are like well i don't think this person is really blessed but you have no idea that that person is struggling more than even you because the person himself is walking and say what is causing all this what is causing all this and most of the time because they don't know where their blessing is coming from it, they know it's not coming from their strength and it's coming from god and they don't know why god is giving it to them most of them keep going back to god in praise they keep going to back go back to god in worship and people we declare it in this church as the month of praise and worship you and i just want to be praising god whether things are difficult for us or not we praise god whether things are working well or not working well we praise god we are going to praise god we are going to worship god we are going to dance before god and we are going to magnify the name of the lord because no flesh shall glory in the presence of god that all things that are called blessing they come from god and they don't come from your strength they don't come from your own power they don't come from your might so you meet people well i i don't think you deserve this tell them that is god's speciality where the first shall be the last and the last are the first and that the people who don't qualify are the ones that are blessed so if you are sitting here today and you are looking at yourself you are comparing yourself with somebody and you think that the person shouldn't be getting what they are getting you are making a very big mistake there are many people working against you who think you don't deserve your position they are busy scheming against you by telling everybody who is showing your favor who is showing you favor not so he or she does not deserve it they contend that you are too young some people look at you sometimes and they say no you are too young for the blessing you carry too young others look at you and they look at your skin color others look at your educational background they think you are not educated enough to carry the blessing you are carrying some too just look at your gender and they say this one is a female she shouldn't be blessed the blessing should go to men and then others will look at your age so maybe you are getting married and your big sister thinks no i should be married before you maybe you are going to you are getting blessed and your big brother is sitting down and he's saying this one is young and god shouldn't be blessing him i am the firstborn and i should be blessed when you come to africa even when it comes to funerals when it comes to even funerals those who die first their funeral must be performed before those who die later so if a man dies in a very typical northern community if a man dies and his children can even perform his funeral they will tell the children that because their great grandfather died and their grandfather couldn't do the funeral and their grandfather died and their father could not do the funeral if they want to do their father's funeral they must go and carry all the backlog of funerals and perform great grandfather then do grandfather before they can do father's funeral we we create things by tradition but i pray that god today when it comes to the time of the laying on of hands that when hands are laid on you tonight may god break every traditional barrier welcome back we have just ended this particular episode of the love revolution broadcast wow securing the destinies of our nation our ministries our businesses and our homes by defeating and overcoming the spirit of envy my heart rejoices i'm excited i'm encouraged i'm empowered because i know that from today somebody's victory is going to spare me on to victory i'm encouraged to know that one person's success will inspire me instead of making me perspire i will not perspire sweat in envy and rage because somebody is succeeding but i'll rather be encouraged and invigorated and inspired to go on i believe it's the same with you somebody's success will inspire you instead of making you perspire. Somebody said something he said. 
The envious man grows lean at the fatness of their neighbor. That means when the envious person sees the neighbor growing fat, they start growing lean. William Shakespeare calls envy the green-eyed monster. That is why what he calls jealousy. I believe we are overcoming the spirit. It will not come in a day, but little by little, spirit of envy, we shall defeat you. We shall conquer you as a nation. We will conquer you as a family. We will conquer you as businesses. We will conquer you as churches. And the entire humanity or human race will defeat you one devil. Foul spirit of envy. We bind you in the name of Jesus. We command you to leave our churches. We command you to leave our homes. We command you to leave our businesses. We command you to leave our ministries and our nation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, we overthrow the spirit of envy. We come against the murders of Cain. We come against the rebellions of Absalom. We come against the tortures and the pursuits of Saul. We come against the greed and the covetousness of Jezebel. We come against the betrayals of Judas Iscariot. We come against every foul spirit of covetousness, lust, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the last of the eyes that operated through Adam and Eve. We defeat that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. And by the spirit of God we pray. Coming against the contamination of the Philistine spirit in our churches. Every curse of Balaam. We reverse it and turn it into a blessing. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe that God has blessed your life. We have been impacted upon. The atmosphere is changing. Something is different. From now going forward. Amen. Presence of the Lord is here. I feel presence of the Lord is here. Presence of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere.